Welcome everybody to the Moxie Meetup. It's already the middle of October, which is hard to believe, but we are trucking along this semester. And today's topic is going to be related to AI research tools. It's going to be for the next few weeks, I'm going to do a series. And this wasn't my plan. It's just that I started um, thinking about this and I saw that I had bitten off way more than I could chew in 30 minutes. And so um, I'm going to break it up into pieces that fit together. And I'm going to start with the most important piece today. Uh, Moxie meetups are usually like AI literacy, technological tools for academia. Sometimes we talk about academic writing. It's a hodgepodge. But we do have a community online, and it happens via Slack, and Dr. Linda Lopez-George is our community strategist, and she is always here at these meetups. She also shares a lot on social media, in addition to sharing in Slack, answering questions in Slack, and so on. So please do join if you haven't already. You can use that QR code. And... The other thing we almost always do at Moxie Meetups is we talk about AI literacy, but today I want to really zoom out and I want to talk more about digital literacies for academics because I think if we're just talking about AI literacy, we're missing the point that it this is AI is one piece of a puzzle and the puzzle seems to be continually getting wider and bigger and more complicated as new especially technologies come into um, existence, but that creates lots of opportunities as well, like interdisciplinary collaboration and so on. But today I want to zoom out a little bit and take more of a big picture approach by exploring this through a systems theory way of thinking about what is really a complex problem that all academics face. They either face it um, in the usually they face this in the beginning of their career, and that's where I'm going to start from the perspective of not necessarily that you are beginning your career, but that you either you are beginning your career or you're helping others who are beginning their career. Almost all of us who get a doctoral degree, we end up mentoring or teaching graduate students, and so I'm taking a very zoomed out approach to all of this and trying to show you, well, what is the system that we need to consider the real value in these technological tools? And so I'm going to talk today, I, I use, I'm going to use an analogy. I, I consider myself a amateur gardener, and I've been really thinking about what can I do with my garden in the fall? So this is on the brain. And I do think analogies are really useful for teaching purposes, and AI is great at analogies. So if you ever are stuck trying to explain something complicated, ask AI. That's my, one of my favorite prompts for an analogy, and you'll get a really good one. But gardening works for a lot of things because a lot of things are a system, and gardening is definitely a system. And in this system that we have, we can think about gardening as, okay, we have the plants, we have the weather, we have the soil, we have water, and of course we have the gardener and the gardener has tools. And so in this analogy, the gardener is the researcher, obviously, and then I'm going to make some different comparisons to other things that we use in our academic systems. So first of all, let me tell you who the players are. So of course, we have the academic, we have the gardener, and typical garden tools that you might use, like your laptop, for example, many different applications and programs, all of those you could consider resources, right? Then we have literature. And literature, in this case, we're going to think about it like a plant. The plants that we're talking about here are the literature. And then, of course, they go into the soil, and then the soil and the plant need water, and the sunlight, etc. And then there are the gatekeepers. And the gatekeepers are things we really don't have control over. So gatekeepers, you can think about it as like powers that be. So these are, you know, your professors, if you're a student or a journal editor, if you're a faculty member who is trying to get published, or maybe it's an administrator. But these are the people who make the rules and keep the rules. And they we don't have any control over them. We can only manage them to a small degree. Very very much like we can't control the weather. I like this analogy. And of course, the gardener, 
manages the system to the degree that they can, just as a researcher manages their academic tools to the degree that they can. So if you don't know about certain tools, then you can't really be in charge of managing. And so that one goal of today is to give you some ideas for all these tools. And the reason we're taking a systems approach, and I'm just going to tell you a trigger warning, the next slide is going to blow your mind, is because we have a lot of things to choose from. So what I'm going to do is divide it out into categories to help you understand what are my choices and where do I start? And so let's start on the left. We're going to start with citation management systems. These are ways that we organize the plants in our garden, essentially collecting them, categorizing them and nurturing them. And the reason we start here is because many universities provide one of these as like a free resources, free resource through the library. And this is going to go with you through your career if you're going to continue being a researcher. Now, if you're not going to continue being a researcher, if you know that you're not going to continue, maybe this isn't so important. But I will tell you, I thought that I was not going to be a researcher. I thought I really just like teaching. I'm going to get out of research. I'm going to get into just a teaching job. Uh, and that is not what happened when I graduated. So you never know. And now I really wish, and I might argue that almost any person who's getting a doctoral degree is going to need to establish, of course, and maintain some level of expertise. And to do that, you really need a place to collect, categorize, and nurture the plants in your garden, which are, the it's like a conversation you're joining. Really, there's already a garden going on, and you're just jumping in on it to figure out how to arrange the plants and explain them and such. Plants, of course, being sources. So we're going to start here today with citation management, and then in the coming weeks, we're going to look at literature discovery, including but not limited to these AI tools that are new. I would say these have been on the market maybe, I don't know, at the most five years. I don't think many of them have been on the market for that long, but so that's why I say at the most. There are also lots of other great literature discovery tools like databases from libraries like Google Scholar. And we're going to look at it from, again, a systems perspective, categorizing them. So there's so these are the big, broad four categories. And then we're going to subdivide each category each week. Or it might not be week to week, but in, in the coming weeks, because next week we have a webinar. So we usually don't do meetup when we have a webinar. Following that will be research assistants, and I'm saying research assistants, but these are really like note-taking tools. I'm not saying much more about that, but many of them have AI capacities. All of these things have AI capacities at this point. And then finally, we'll talk about some writing and feedback tools. I did a quick survey of some Moxie members just to get some feedback about what you all want to hear, and many people said, I want to know how to integrate Moxie into my workflows. I want to see a workflow from start to finish. So to get that, to make that happen, we have to back all the way up, I really think, to citation management systems. Um, and so that's what we'll, we'll do is we'll start today and then we'll work on the other ones. Um, academic expertise is gained over years, not months even, <laughs> maybe to some extent months and, and weeks, but it, it takes a little while. And so exploring these tools to um, use in your expertise it is going to take a little while and it takes a depth that um, we can't really do in just a few minutes. Okay. So what I did is I put together a citation management resource Looking at the top, I think there's seven on here, management systems that I found online just for, through my own research and from my experience and talking to other people and what they use. But I will tell you, I don't have one and I don't use one because nobody ever suggested that I do this when I started. And so I was basically trying to organize all these different plants in my garden with just my bare hands. And it was really messy. It was inefficient. My 
my major professor or somebody at some point said, why don't you make a, a spreadsheet? So I started making a spreadsheet and that worked for a little while, but then it just, it didn't last. And then finally, when I made my dissert, when I wrote my dissertation, I had one that just was for my dissertation, but throughout the seven years that I was in graduate school, just for my PhD, not counting my master's, I amassed all kinds of sources and all kinds of different sub areas of my field. And one spreadsheet was really going to cut it. I guess maybe I could have had multiple tabs, but it was messy. So unless you're really dedicated to your spreadsheet, I don't think that's the best plan. So I'm saying this from the perspective of someone who never learned it and who knows they really should, but just won't bite the bullet. So I did this research for me and for you, and I want to give you some things to think about. And I will, so anything in this PDF, which we will put, I'll upload for the live attendees, and we will put it in the description in YouTube. Anytime you see a little icon like this means that this is a resource you can link to. And so you'll find this, it's just a one page document, but inside the document, there are other links. And so here, what I've done is oh, given an overview of some of the main systems that I know people use. And you can do your own research in terms of thinking about what is best for you. But I want to give you some ways to think about it. Again, coming at this from a systems approach so that you can really personalize your choice. And the first aspect I think you really should consider is integrations. In terms of how do you want to interact with this tool? So it's basically a database. It just is going to collect sources. Many of them pull out metadata like author, journal, issue number, page numbers, date of publication. Some of them pull out even things like impact score or abstract to save that in your system, in your account. But then what are you going to do with it? So the ultimate goal is that you're going to get this in your writing. So where are you doing that writing? It could be in Microsoft Word or Google Docs or any number of tools that people are using now. I heard someone the other day say that they only use Notion or Obsidian or MEM. And these are some of the tools that we'll talk about in a couple of weeks when we get into the research assistance. I know people are using PaperPal, Quillbot, lots of different places where you can be doing the writing. So I think the first question I would ask is where am I going to be doing the writing? Because that's where you want it to be integrated into. The other thing that you should think about is this a web-based tool or is this a desktop application for offline access or is there both? I did briefly try to use Mendeley when I was in graduate school and I got very overwhelmed because I didn't really understand about syncing the web version with the desktop version and I kept losing things and it was probably user error. It was user error, I'm sure, but still, it was too much for me. Looking back, I probably didn't need anything that robust. I probably just needed something much, much more simple with a lot of tutorials available online. So thinking about some of these features is really important and platform is one of them. So the other thing to think about for me is that when I was doing some of my research, I was traveling a lot. It just happened. It just so happened that one of my parents was ill at the time. And so I spent a lot of time writing and reading in hospital rooms. Unfortunately, I didn't always have a good internet connection. So I would need something on my hard drive to access without a connection. So maybe depending on where you are in the world, or if you're just off the grid, this is really important to consider. Of course, price, this eternal question, is it free or is it paid? And how much can I get for free? As, as AI is getting embedded into many of these tools, AI is not going to be free. I'm sure you've read AI takes a lot of energy. And so it's never going to be free. Anything that's worth, that's going to make something easier for you, it's going to increase the value and it's going to have something that, that you will need to pay for. Unless you really don't use it very much. In that case, maybe you don't need certain features. And so you could get away with a free version, but most of these tools have both a free and a paid version. Some of them are 100% free and open source. So think about what's in your budget and think about how long you're gonna be using this. And 
ask your university if they provide access to any of these for free. Um, that was something I learned as I was doing this research is that many universities offer these for free. I wouldn't have even known to ask that. So I certainly didn't. Maybe they used one at Iowa State where I did my PhD. I don't know. And then finally, support. So think about your own learning curve with technology. Think about how you feel about technology. How do you interact with the technology that's already in your life? Are you constrained by those advanced features or are you empowered by them? Do you go out and seek tutorials? I watch every video I can when I'm learning a new technology. I don't like to read documentation, but I will watch a video. I'm a very visual learner. I want you to show me, not tell me or both. And so that is a big consideration. Do they provide tutorials or is it a new company? For this, I would say go with something that's pretty established because this is going to follow you and you're going to keep these this kind of a tool with you for quite a long time. So look at the available documentation and really think about what you how you want to operate as you're learning this new system. And these are considerations you can pass on to your graduate students as well. I really wish someone had just handed me anything like this one page table with this information. That would have given me a starting place that I could then go take that into consideration and really consider, is this something I want to do or not? So yeah, that's all I have for today. And I would love to hear from you if any of you have experience with any of these, because I don't have, I have basic experience with Mendeley. It didn't go well. Like I said, not any fault of Mendeley. I think I just Honestly, I asked my office mate, what's that program you're using? And he was like, Mendeley, you need to get it. So I got it. And then I felt immediately overwhelmed and didn't use it. And so it didn't do me any good because I didn't use it. Yeah, so that's what I have today. And now I'm going to stop talking and open it up and just see if anybody has any comments or questions. I'm also going to share this in the chat, these slides. Oh, Linda, do you want to share or you want me to read what you wrote in the chat? Oh, I don't mind sharing. So I love Sotero and mm -hmm. we started using it uh, in, I started using it in my second course during my dissertation, but only because I was like you, uh, Kimberly, I was feeling overwhelmed about how am I going to keep up with all these articles that I'm starting to read. And I didn't think a spreadsheet was I'm not savvy that well with Excel, and I just didn't think that was the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And so our dis my dissertation chair also happened to be the course instructor for the technology class that we were taking in the leadership program. And she came into our class and showed us how to use Otero because she was a staunch user of it. And mm -hmm. she really likes it because it was free. It was portable. It wasn't tied to the institution. So we could take it with us when we graduated and continued our own mm -hmm. research. Or just even when you're as a professional, even if you're not doing research and you're re reading articles and then you want to be able to go back and, and see what you read, it's very helpful. You can also, there's also a tool that you can visualize based on the articles. What are some gaps? Because you can tag things as you read. You can take notes. And the best thing about it is anytime you were in your browser and you were reading the article or the website or whatever, you just had the integrated, the Zotero, and I would just click the browser and it would go into whatever folder I said it should go to. Mm -hmm. And and it was always there. So the categorize it and see it. And it's wonderful. And after that, I was like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. this is a this is making me feel less overwhelmed. Okay, so ultimately it assuaged your anxiety. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I have heard Zotero from lots of people. I would say that's probably the number one that I've heard. I also know Zotero really prioritizes integrations with other programs, like Obsidian, for example, I know, is which is a note-taking program so that mm -hmm. you can get your information from your citation manager and populate it and make sense of it in your notes. I think that's helpful. And we'll talk about that in the coming weeks. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about Zotero. Anybody else want to share? Thanks for joining everyone. And be sure to 
come back maybe not next week because next week we'll have a webinar but the week after that i'm going to pick back up with how to find those literature that you put into the citation manager but i think you need to have the citation manager in place first which is why we started there so have a great week and reach out to us. You can always reach us using the email address hello at moxielearn.ai. Thanks.